So I have three goals for today. Goal number one is to convince you all that it's a good thing to get old. Goal number two is to convince you all that you shouldn't go faster. You should probably do the opposite and slow down. And goal number three is to convince you all that you should be coding until you die. So will I succeed? I guess we will have the answer to that question in like 50 minutes. So welcome. I'm Tobias Moodig, a consultant at Ceteris in Stockholm, currently acting as a developer code coach. And this is Get Old, Go Slow, Write Code. But before we start, I actually have a confession to made, make. I don't know .NET. I have uh, spent a few years co coding C, C++. I have spent some time coding Scala. I have taken way too many years spending coding Java. And I'm currently working with Python. So, well, now you at least know why I will say some strange things, maybe so. But uh, also, this talk, it will be a little bit interactive, so you can already now browse into etc.ch slash five capital W two capital Y. Those capital things is actually important. So etc.ch slash five capital W two capital Y or just use a QR code. No worries if you don't manage to grab the link now, it will come back later in this talk. So let's start with the aging. And I actually start this talk by quoting myself from the talk description. So, turning old as a developer is hard. It is hard to stay relevant, hard to keep up with the competition of newcomers, and hard to know all of those new frameworks, tools, languages, and practices. For like 20 years ago, I was working at a big travel company back in Stockholm, and we were like 15 people that was placed in this big room, working with a like, public website. But in the corner of that room, there was two odd fishes, two grumpy old men. And one of them actually like, coughed so loud, so everyone like hided under the desk each time, hiding from what we thought was like the World War III or something. But those two men, they worked at a different system. I believe it was some kind of like maintenance system, and it had this really old-fashioned UI taken like directly from war games, if you have seen that old movie. And the programming language, well, I'm sure it wasn't Java, and it couldn't have been C, because both of them lacked, you know, these big C developer beards. So I, thought, I think it was probably like Fortran. But suddenly, one day, they were gone. The system was replaced. They had become irrelevant, like dinosaurs from a past time. And in some way, those two old men, they have been like the definition for me about how it is to get old as a developer. Old, not just physically, but also in technique. But still, I do admire those two old men because they kept on with their passion, writing code until the bitter end. But back to the main question here, what is old? And who can know that better than you? So now it's time to pick up those devices. etc.ch slash five, capital W, two, capital Y, or just use a QR code. So I will remove that link in like five, four, Three, two, one, zero point five. People are still using their camera. Zero point four, zero point three. Okay, there we go. That was black. Demo gods, or whatever we should call them. Sorry about that. Can you see it now? Yeah.
So did I just reset the result or has actually no one vaulted? Whoops. Well, that should have been the uh, warm-up question, just to check the techniques. So I guess I'm glad we at least don't have any killers in the house. So let's move on to the first question. Hope the technique is... Oh my gosh, should I... No internet. I had this five minutes ago. Let's switch to uh, mobile hotspot instead. So, uh, bear with me here. Actually, two sandwiches went into the bar, but uh, they left. Do you know why? They didn't serve food. Sorry about that. So, finally, question number one should be an easy one. What is your age? The results still popping in. It's a tight race there between 31 to 40 and 41 to 50. Yeah, it's a draw. Nice. Third one to 40. Let's move on to question number two. From a developer perspective, what do you consider being old? Or do you consider yourself being old? Is it like yes or no? Is, are you more like, I will never get old? Are you kidding me? So at least some oldest in the house, but most of you feel quite young. So, third and final question for, for now. From a developer perspective, what do you consider being old? Is it when you reach like 20, when you reach 30, 40, or when you get 50 or above? Or are you more that kind of person that thinks that everyone older than you, they are really old, but I will never grow up. Then you go for the my age plus one. Or is it more that age is a mental thing, not a physical one? And I guess we have a true winner here. So back to the presentation. What actually got me into this in the beginning was reading the Stack Overflow Developer Survey back in 2019. And it actually stated that the average age of software developer, it was 28. So 75% of us was below 35. So India had the young, youngest developers with an average of 26, while the Australians were the oldest with an average of 32. So I actually thought it was quite young, so I cross-checked it with a few more sources, and they came up with more or less the same results. So I continued to compare us to some other professions to see, was the developers 28? Was it really so young? Starting with teachers, what's the average age of a teacher? And it actually turned out to be the meaning of life for those of you who know your hitchhiking. It's 42. They beat us with almost 15 years. That is an enormous difference. 
and medical doctors. How old are they? And no surprise there, they are even older, with an average of 51. But how about project managers? This would be an interesting one, because I assume we have more or less the same level of education, we work for the same clients, the same employers, probably even in the same projects. So are we the same age? No way, they are about the same age as a teacher. So I continue checking up a few more common jobs, and I couldn't find anything with an age profile that looked like software developer, at least not that have like the same level of education. So I continued with some other kind of type of jobs that don't demand those years at the university. For instance, taxi drivers. What's the average age of a taxi driver? And they are actually even older than teachers. Average 47. I really needed to go lower. So I went to the bar, start talking to the bartender, and now we are getting closer, but still, they are six, six and a half years older than us. Average 34, 34 and a half. And how about the colleagues at the restaurants, the dishwashers? Well, no luck there. They are the same age, average 34. And now I was starting to become quite grumpy because I really wanted to find something by myself that was younger than us developers, not just like sheet and read in the top of the statistics. But then I remember this tweet I saw. Minecraft players. How old are they? They turned out to be 24. That's not bad. We beat them with four years. But still, there is a big leap between being a software developer and a bartender than it is between being a software developer and a Minecraft player. And to be honest, Minecraft players, not really a profession for most of us, right? But then I got it. You can always count on the US military, right? At least in this case, it was actually true. They have an average of 27. And also, this is not really a profession, right? More of an employer. So this includes everything from like five-star generals to tank drivers to pilots. They, for instance, expect the cannon fodder to be even younger than 27. And also, sport professionals, for instance, professional football players, have an average of 26, 26 and a half. And when finally cheating with that statistics, there were a few more jobs that have had a lower average than us. For instance, I believe that the lifeguards were the youngest with an average of 22. But I will still claim that being a software developer, we are one of the youngest working people in the world. And when taking level of education under count, I would say that we are definitely the youngest. But Age, that's just the number of a paper, right? What's actually more important to me was how long do we tend to stay within the profession? So I will bump that question back to you. So time to pick up those uh, devices once again. etc.ch slash 5 capital W2 capital Y. And let's hope that the Wi-Fi gods are in our favor. Sorry. So, next question. How many years of experience as a professional developer do you have? So, is it less than two, two to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, or more than 20? And it seems like we have the oldest in the room. Second question. So what was the age of the best developer you have ever worked with? Was he or she less than 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50? Or was he or she even older than 50?
quite clear winner here as well. So, last question for now. If you take a wild guess, how many years do you think you will continue being a developer? Is this your final year? Do you think you will be coding for one to two years, or three to five, six to ten years, more than ten years? Or do you actually think that you will code until you die? And let's just cross our finger and hope that that last option is actually like longer than the other ones. So, well, maybe I'm preaching to the... Yeah. So, so when do developers quit? I would say that the audience in this room, it seems quite mature, both based on like the number of years you have been developing and also the first poll there, your age. I don't know if it's like the topic that draws the oldest to this room. Maybe the other rooms are like filled with younglings. Nevertheless, the expected number of years to stay as a software developer, that is actually eight. And I would say that that is not good. That is really bad. I think we are replacing the developer tribe way too often, throwing competence right at the scrapyard. So why are people leaving the developer, quit being a developer so early? Is it like, people using being a developer as some kind of like bouncing pads towards other, other professions? Or are we scaring them away? Once again, back to you. Time for the devices. I guess you know the drill now. So just one question this time. What do you think will make you quit as a developer? Do you think you will be burned out? Do you think you will get some kind of like promotion, changing your role? Or do you think you will code until retirement? Or do you think you will lose your spark? It will not be fun to be coding anymore. Or do you think it will have something to do more with like the aging, having a hard time to keep up? And I see that we have quite a lot of like optimistics in the house. You're aiming at winning at that lottery and then you will hop on the next plane to Bahamas and you will not write one single if statement for the rest of your life, right? And we actually have one more, one other kind. So this time I actually think that the audience here more or less nailed the rest of the world. Because when i having this talk, when I read surveys, talk to people, there are usually three things that stands out quite a lot as a reason for developers to quit. And reason one, number one is that they lose the spark. They don't think that it's fun to code anymore. The second big reason for developers to quit is the one that actually crushed, crushed the numbers here. Getting some kind of like promotion, changing role, climbing the company hierarchy, or whatever you like to call it. And the third big reason to quit is usually that people start to feel old. They start to feel slow. They have a hard time to keep up. So let's elaborate a little bit more on those three, starting with losing the spark. And to me, it would be quite interesting to know why people lose like the eagerness to code. It is out of scope for this talk, but still, I think that this is a very valid reason, but also a sad reason, but definitely a valid reason for developers to quit. I mean, if you don't have the passion for coding, you should probably not have it as your profession either. So the day you start to wake up with a feeling that I don't want to go to work, to code anymore. I want to do something else. Then you have my total blessing. Please feel free, go on doing something else. But how about the second big reason for developers to quit? Getting a promotion, climbing the hierarchy, or whatever you like to call it. Well, if it's in like the combination of the first one, losing the spark, this is probably the perfect way to go. I mean, you're in the same company, you know the organization, 
you will probably have a good fallback option as well to get back to coding if that new career path wasn't something for you. But if you're more into like the promotion thing, well, I actually stepped into this trap myself once. I was quite flattered, but also surprised when I was offered to become head of development. But I'm sorry to say, but this was so boring. It felt like a total waste of my expertise. Instead of doing things that I loved, things that I think I'm pretty decent at, like writing code and doing other like techy stuff, I was stuck at those budget meetings talking about like resources or arguing with a cab, you know, the change advisory board. Why changes in our mobile app that my developers did could not make aeroplanes to fall down from the sky. You might think that was a, like a bad joke, but it's actually true. I once had to explain to this group of hopefully quite smart people why changes in our mobile app could not make aeroplanes to crash. So, did I do a good job? Well, I think my teams liked me. I was pretty good guarding them from like the insanity of company administration. But I wasn't probably so good from any other point of views. And I guess we all have seen this. Just because someone is a great developer, that person will not automatically be a great manager or a good project leader or a decent boss. I would say that the opposite is probably just as common. And there is actually a term regarding this, stated in the late 60s by Lawrence J. Peter and Raymond Hull. And it is called the Peter Principle. And the Peter Principle states that a person who is competent at their job will earn promotion to a more senior position, which require different skills. But if the promoted person lacks the skills required for the new role, then they will be incompetent at the new level, and so they will not be promoted again. So according to this, people will like get promotion until they reach their level of incompetence, and there they will stay being incompetent for like forever. And this might lead to what's called the Peter's Corollary, so in time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out his duties. So we have organizations out there where more or less everyone is incompetent at the job. Well, of course, this is a bit satirical, but it has some kind of truth in it as well. And there we have the expected software developer lifecycle, where I think we are more or less expected to start as software developers, but after a few years, we should probably aim on moving on, taking the next step, maybe become some kind of like team leader or a project leader. And finally, some of us might, need, might reach nirvana and become some kind of like manager. For me, that's more or less like pushing people from being competent to being incompetent. And we have known this for like 50 years, and still this is one of the most common reasons for developers to quit. I mean, there is even courses in moving from developer to manager. Well, I think this is whacked. I think we need to address this. There must be ways to make a career and continue coding. So any manager seeing this, could you please stop trying to transform your like 10x developers into like 0.4x administrators? Instead, give them a decent salary, reward them continuously, and let them keep on doing what they do best, writing code. And for you developers who think about changing career, well, please think it over. It's not worth it if you don't have the passion for it. Believe me, I have tried. But how about the third big reason for a developer to quit? Getting old, getting slow. Is it a hard thing? to get old as a developer. I mean, maybe Zuckerberg were right. 
young people are just smarter. Well, I might be biased here, but I would say that Zuckerberg is actually wrong. I mean, Newton, for instance, he was 44 when he published the Principia. And Röntgen, he was about the same age when discovering the X-rays. And if you take a good look at most Nobel Prize winners these days, they look more like American presidential candidates than developers, right? But still, I would say that when you're getting a little bit old as a developer, remember to stay relevant. Work on your competence. Don't paint yourself into that corner like my old colleagues that used to cough at my previous place. So try to be a generalist as well. Don't niche yourself too much because you might need to change your job in the last few years. And that might be hard if you're stuck in old techniques. But how about the slowness? Is it a problem to get slow? Well, I don't think we should stop thinking about slowness as something bad. I think that slow is good. We need to slow down. In one of my older talks, I actually quickly mentioned that slowing down was a good thing. And that thought started to grow on me a bit. So I googled it a bit more and I found out that way smarter people than me had more or less the same ideas. Like these tweets from the TDD guru, J.B. Rainsberger, worried that TDD will slow down your programmers. Don't. They probably need slowing down. Or this one, also from JB, sooner, not faster, slow down to avoid making rash commitments. Or how about this one from Lemmy, you know, the guy who cracked the MacBook some years ago. Going fast without control could be the biggest enemy of software development. Still not convinced, Josha Karyowski, father of modern agile, we slow down in order to gain better balance and control. Ultimately, this kind of slowing down helps us speed up. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So what is fast? What is speed? What is slowing down? Well, I think that too many people mix up rushing with speed. I mean, we developers, we try to be Usain Bolt. You know, Usain Bolt, the fastest man on earth on 100 meters. But what we forget is that software development, it is not a 100 meters dash. Still, we behave as Usain Bolt, running as fast as we can for 100 meters. But when we reach the goal, we are asked to run 100 meters more, over and over and over again. I don't think we developers should be Usain Bolt. We should be Ricardo Abad. So let me tell you the story of Ricardo Abad. He's from the city Tafaya in Spain. And on the 1st of October 2010, he ran a marathon. And on the 2nd of October 2010, he ran another one. And so he continued for 607 consecutive days, running one marathon a day for more than one and a half year. And what's even more impressive is that he continued working shifts at the factory meanwhile. So if he worked in the mornings or in the night, he ran in the afternoon. And when he worked in the afternoon, he ran in the mornings. And I believe that that is the mentality we should have as software developers. We are not sprinters. We are long distance runners. We should slow down and find the sustainable pace. So why are we still doing this kind of rushing? Well, to me, it's probably a combination of things like deadlines. To me, deadlines are usually poison. It's mostly some kind of like a random date that someone guesstimated a long time ago. But that date suddenly like transform and becomes the truth, something that we need to stick to. But I think that I actually did this right at least once at that Time, I was doing a gig as a system architect at the Swedish tech 
tax agency. So me and my team, we were responsible for the login and the identification of users for their public e-services. And for you who don't know the Swedish tax agency, they have this really strict deadline once a year in the beginning of March. And that's because everything there circles around the yearly income tax declaration, where approximately, approximately 6.3 million truly unique users use their e-services for about four weeks. That's like 80% of the Swedish population above 18. So what we needed to do was to replace an old obsolete solution with a brand new one. So this was, this was a big work. We needed new software, we needed new hardware, and of course, a whole lot of uh, development. But after a while, that deadline in March, it was starting to feel tough. So we needed to take a decision. Should we like work overtime? Should we rush? Should we cheat with the quality, cut some corners, and build a crappy but hopefully working solution? Or should we actually like wait for a year and aim for a quality solution? And this time we actually took what I still think is one of the best decisions in my career. We actually waited. Sure, we lost some pre prestige. It probably costed some money. But we could build a solution that was easy to maintain that they could use for many years to come, that we could be proud of. But I'm sorry to say that this is one of the few occasions that I have ever seen this, that not even this really strict code freeze deadline was a true deadline. It was more like a, a goal, something we should try to stick to. What I believe is another rushing factor is actually the lean and the startup movement, where we are told that the only thing that matters is to deliver, to be the first on the market. But to be honest, how often does it care? How often does it matter to your company if you rush instead of keeping a controlled pace? Well, for a few of us, maybe once or twice in a lifetime. But for most of us, I would say that it doesn't ever, ever make a difference. Taking a few Swedish examples here, I mean, Spotify, for instance, I don't think that they will lose users just because they like share playlist with a QR code would be a week late. And I don't think that people will stop playing in Minecraft just because uh, the new sea creature feature must wait for the next release. And people will definitely not change their mortgage loans to another bank just because they can't download the latest interest rates as a PDF file from the website. But these users, they will definitely go on and try to find other options if you start building a crappy solution that you don't dare to change at all in a few years' time. And also, about the reasons to rush. How about all those bad implementations in the name of Agile? I mean, just listen to the word sprint. What does that imply? Let's rush as fast as you can for two weeks, then come back tomorrow, and we can start a new two weeks rush. That's more or less the same as asking Usain Bolt to run 100 meters more right after every race and to do it over and over and over again. I think we need to slow down and find the sustainable pace. And the Agile Manifesto, it also promotes this as one of the principles. The Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant place, pace indefinitely. And all of you who knows your XP, extreme programming, should also recognize sustainable pace as one of the key concepts. So based on that, I would say that it's, it doesn't care if you are a little bit slow as a developer, because it doesn't come down to who is the fastest on the keyboard, who can understand everything without asking those stupid questions, or who knows all those new, tech all those new techniques. It all comes down to the quality of the code, because, it, because it's still so, so, still so much 
faster in the long run to build something right instead of building something fast to rush. So if you're old, if you get a feeling that you are slow, I'm certain that you will still make so much value to your company as long as you can produce some quality code. And based on your experience, I'm totally sure that you can do that, write quality code. So please stick on with your passion. Robert C. Martin, Uncle Bob, he says that if your software is getting harder and harder to develop, you are doing something wrong. And to me, that's exactly what happens when we rush. It usually starts with some kind of bad feeling. And after a while, your software will be harder and harder to change. And after a while, the only thing that remains is to start the big rewrite. I mean, who has not been there? You have the opportunity to write something new, but you don't really have the time to do it properly. So you cheat a little bit with the quality. You cut some corner. You have the best intention to fix it later when you have more time. We, we don't write this unit test now. We do it later when we have more time. But believe me, you will not get more time later. That crappy code, it will live on. It will hunt you down. It will bite you. And suddenly that application will be in such a bad shape that you don't dare to change it at all. So the only thing that remains is to start the big rewrite. So the same people try building the same application once again, but they don't really have the time to do it properly. So they cheat a little bit with a unit test, they cut some corners, and there we go again. There is a word for this. It's called waste, and it can more or less kill an organization. And Martin Fowler, brilliant guy, he says that the fundamental role of internal quality is that it lowers the cost of future change. But there is some extra effort required to write good software, which does impose some cost in the short term. So I read this, that Martin is on my side. He also thinks that it should take it a little bit slower in the beginning, because it will lower the cost of a future change. You will be quicker in the long run. But he also claims that developers find poor quality code significantly slows them down within a few weeks. So based on that, there are not that many occasions, right, where we gain on rushing, not even in the short run, because more or less all software lives way longer than a few weeks. But now I have been talking for way too long. Time to pick up those devices again. etc.ch slash five, capital W2, capital Y. So, how often do you feel stressed about deadlines? So is it all the time? Is it often? Is it almost never or never? I would at least say that the stressed once or more. Question number two. So how often do you cut corners, sheet with quality? Is it all the time? Is it often? Is it almost never? Or is it actually never? I trace once again. And I think we have a winner. Third question. Why do you cut corners? Do you feel pressure from the management to deliver? Do you feel pressure from the team to deliver? Do you feel pressure from yourself to deliver? Or is it more that quality is boring or unnecessary? Or is it even so that you're not really sure about what quality is? Or do you have some other kind of reason to cheat with the quality? And I can see that we actually have a few superhumans in this room that actually don't cut corners. Three, can we have one more? No? 
<laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so when I saw the results of that previous poll, I was a little bit spooked, a little bit scared. I mean, more than 50% of the people in this room admit that they feel like stressed about the deadlines. And about 50% also admits that they cheat with the quality. And like, I can't even count so high, but almost all of you feel pressure to deliver. Or am I mixing, mixing up the results there? I'm not really sure. Still, it more or less feels like there is some kind of like disease moving around in the developer world. And I believe that the cure for this disease is to slow down. I think we should slow down and find the sustainable pace to try to build quality software from the beginning. So let me spend the last part of this talk with a few more concrete examples of what I mean with slowing down. So I believe that you should slow down and take the time to practice. Take the time to improve your competence have, for instance, book clubs at your work, read books, attend conferences. You are all here. That is great. Train through coding katas. Try to create that learning culture at your working place. And I am sure that it, that, that will not only make you better developers. You will, of course, write better code. You will probably build better products. And I'm certain that you have so much more fun meanwhile also, because to be honest, the places where I have spent my best time are not the ones that paid me the most. The places where I could work with bleeding edge technology or where, where I could work like within the coolest domains. The places where I have had my best times as a developer was definitely the one who had a real living learning culture. Places where I could go home every Friday with a feeling that I have learned something new, something useful this week as well. And also, I don't think that improving your competence should be something that you need to do on like weekends, evenings, holidays. Weekends, that's for family and friends. This should be part of your day-to-day -day work. I mean, if your company wants you to do good work, they should also give you the time, the tools, and the opportunity to be as good as you can be. And I also believe that you should slow down and try to tweak your process, eliminate the waste. For instance, use retrospectives and make sure to have a good outcome. To me, a retrospective, that's not just a nagging meeting. Make sure to have a good outcome and that you take the time to implement those improvements. For me, way of working, it can often be seen like some kind of like a garden. And a garden, that needs gardening to keep its shape. But if you ever come to Stockholm, please come by my house if you want to see a garden without a gardener. I mean, the weeds pops up between the stones, the grass is a little bit too long, the hedge needs to be cut, and the snails. You know, the snail, they have some kind of like snail race right through my strawberry plants. But still, the internet connection to the house is really good. But try to work on your processes. Don't leave your way of working unattended because you don't want it to look like my home garden. Believe me. And slow down and take the time to know each other. Build that trust in your team. I guess some of us have heard like the hype regarding psychological safety. Amy Edmondson theories and the Google team studies that showed that the single most important thing for a team to be high performing was actually the trust in the team, that the team members felt psychologically safe. So spend some time trying to know each other. Don't see your team as a coding machine, a feature factory. See each other as humans. So spend some time learning, getting to know each other. You should have some fun together, laugh together, cry together. Invest some time in your colleagues and you will be rewarded. 
So how often do you brush your teeth? Probably a few minutes every day, right? And I believe that team hygiene should be the same. Sure, you could go on that like team building trip, climb some mountains, camp in the woods, eat some snakes, and hope that you will come back and become a real great team. And sure, you could brush your teeth for 24 hours in a row once a year and hope that that will have the best, the best impact. Or you could brush your teeth for a few minutes every day. I know what I believe have the best uh, like impact on my teeth. And in the same way, I believe that spending some time, more or less every day, to build the trust in your team will have the greatest impact. And I also think that you should slow down and take the time to plan ahead. In my experience, we usually do this the least when we need it the most. So constantly plan and revisit. Use like sprint plannings, daily stand-ups, whatever you call the meetings. For instance, the daily stand-ups. For me, that main purpose should be to plan the day ahead. For me, the daily stand-up, it is not the reporting meeting where you should like spend most of the time trying to explain what you did yesterday. Your focus should be to plan the day ahead. But I actually once worked at this product place where I was surrounded by so many great developers. I mean, we were building state-of-the-art state code. The code coverage was great. We should have been that high-performance team. But instead, nobody used the things that we built. We were like raging bulls, running as fast as we can, but in the totally wrong direction. Instead, we should have slowed down, making a quick plan every day, every week. Where should we continue? What should we do next? But we just rushed. So take your time to plan ahead. Make sure that you move on in the right direction. And I think you should slow down and take the time to refact your code. Remember the Boy Scout rule. Always leave your campground a little bit cleaner than you found it. Always leave your code a little bit cleaner than you found it. It is said that the ratio between reading and writing code is well over 10 to 1. So spend some time improving that readability of your code. Spend some time to improve that bad design to make the system constantly evolve so it can match the current state and behavior to support the behavior of your system and spend some time to, to remove that technical depth day after day, week after week, year after year, because it will make you so much faster in the long run. And I think you should slow down and add some slack into your life. Have you heard about the parable about the, the traffic jams? I mean, everything on the highway is rolling quite smoothly until the number of cars reach that magical limit what the highway can handle. And then everything goes from like a quite decent pace into a total jam just by adding a few more cars. And I believe that we humans, we are more or less the same. With like a full calendar or with a mentality that you should be coding from nine to five, you will be choked. And as soon as that some unexpected happens, you will have some chaos in your life. So instead, try to add some slack into your life, some unplanned time. To me, slack, that's not the same as vacation. It's just some time where you don't know what to do. Sometimes you will probably just keep on working as usual. Sometimes you will probably fix that unexpected event. Or you might read a good book, write a blog post, or just be creative. You would be amazed by how many great ideas that actually pops up when you're not stressed. Or you might just need some time to rest, to clear your mind. Or you could spend a few hours helping your neighbor team. Wouldn't it be nice if you could help your neighbor team? without the need of working overtime yourself. So to sum it up, I think we need to slow down so we can build quality 
build with quality from the beginning because that's the only way to be fast in the long run. So in the beginning of this talk, I said that I had three goals for today. So let's see if I succeeded. Time for those devices one more time. So you will now go home and take the course, develop a manager, or will you actually try to slow down? Or will you rush a little bit harder? Or will you promise yourself that you should keep on coding? Or will you just play Minecraft to raise the average age? Or do you aim at learning something new, like Fortran? So yes, some final words to all you developers who think about stop coding. Please think this over. Beware of the Peter principle and stay with your passion. And don't bother about your being old and slow. You are actually not growing old. You are growing up. Take advantage of that. Make those gray hair your biggest assets and let the rest of the world slow down together with you. And since I see that we actually have a few minutes left, may I ask you all for one final favor? I have done this talk a few times, but only within my comfort zone, within the Java world. Is this a message that also is needed outside the Java world? Please just give me a rating on this talk, one to five. So this talk was an excellent talk, a good talk, okay, but not more. Was it like peeling onions in a submarine? Or was it even worse? Was it like listening to Justin Bieber? Thank you. And uh, please keep in touch. You can uh, just grab me up here in the hallway at the party, drop me an email. I am available at X ish Twitter. LinkedIn, I think that was all. Thank you, and have a great party.